this computer. Yes, but you, you have to send me an email where you want the Oh, right, the sorry. Sent, uh, so that I can copy and paste it. I want you to okay. work. Got it. Copy. Uh, give to a friend. Send an email. Email. Control V. Send email. You are now the proud owner of Darksiders 3. <gasps> hey. I don't know. I've, I've, good... heard, uh, I've heard decent things about it. I've just never played any of the games. So Okay. Well, uh uh i think the first one was war the second one was pestilence and it's the four horsemen and you get to play yeah. so it's it's not necessarily i have heard not great things oh, I, this. I can't i'm sorry i can't i can't answer that um i'm in class um I so i've heard uh not great things about three but yeah. Mostly that it's pedestrian. It's okay. Okay. Um, not that it's, you know, horrible or anything. Uh, okay. Uh, anything else we need to do? No, I don't think so. I got lots of things to do and uh, we're going to do business stuff at the end. So uh, now is the time for me to ruin movies for you. Um. So let me also let me get rid of that. Everyone. Okay. Uh, I cannot come to the phone. I'm in class. Uh hold on. I gotta I gotta mute. I muted the mic. Sorry, I didn't mute. <laughs> um, so, uh, Tacoma. Um, out of curiosity, what will the quiz focus on? Um, uh, generally, if you play through Tacoma, I'm not going to ask where all 10 cats are because that's not what I care about. Um, uh, but if you play through Tacoma, uh, you will be able to answer the question or questions. I forget if there are one or two. Um, uh, now, theoretically, in Tacoma, like the whole thing of Tacoma is you have to take basically a, a, a data pad and plug it in and download something. And it takes a, a certain amount of time to download the thing. And while that thing is downloading, you can go explore and see things. Um, and theoretically, if you're playing Tacoma um, and uh, you just stand there and stare at the thing downloading for however long it takes to download and go nowhere else, uh, which is entirely possible to do, uh, then you will not do well on the quiz. Uh, are quiz questions different per person? Uh, no. Uh, this week's quiz, I believe, has a Tacoma on it. Let me look. Uh, 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 assignments. Come on. 
Uh, quiz two, reading quiz two. Uh, let's go at it. Questions. Uh, boo, 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 boo. Oh no, there isn't a Tacoma question. Okay, never mind. Maybe next week. I don't think so. Okay, never mind. There's not a Tacoma question. Sorry, my bad. Um, <laughs> so that's a lot of, uh, uh, I know you can't really stop us, but are the quizzes open book? Yes. The quizzes are totally open book. AKA, can I open a YouTube video and reference it quickly? If I don't remember something, absolutely. Uh, feel free. Uh, you can also, uh, on all the books, uh, open, have the, the book open to the chapter. Um, my feeling is that just the act of skimming through the book uh, to find the answer, if that's if, if that's all you want to do in order to absorb the fabulous knowledge that is in the book, at least that gets you something. Um, the point of the quizzes is not the the point of reading the book is not to pass the quizzes. The point of reading the book is to get the information in the book. The quizzes are. Uh, basically my way of giving you two points for being a good doobie and actually reading the book. Seem reasonable? Um, uh, so read the book um, and the quizzes will take care of themselves mostly. Um, and yeah, stay, stay open book all you want. Um, don't care. Uh, uh, Honestly, I looked um, on one of those, I forget what the name of the site was, but you can uh, um, you can download like old tests for various um, uh, courses. And so I, I Googled I, or I, I searched IMGD stuff um, and I'm happy that none of my courses were on this cheat site um, because A, uh, I, I don't believe in like tests um, because I don't think like you learn that way. And mostly um, the, the quizzes and stuff are just bullshit ways to give you points um, for doing what you would have done anyway. Um, and second, I think you learn by using the information that is given to you. Like uh, uh, back in the day when I was a physics major, yes, I was a physics major. Um, uh, they let us take cheat sheets into all the tests. Um, and I remember people like making these amazing like uh, 0.5 point cheat sheets of everything from the book. Um, and my feeling was if you did all the homework um, and you were, you got used to, to using all the kind of constants and formulas that you were, that you needed to solve the problems that the cheat sheet was just a handy reference thing anyway. So um uh going back to sean here uh uh because out of the hour i've gotten to play so far there's moments where there are like five conversations going on with tons of extra stuff to read as well so i was a little worried uh the whole point of tacoma is that you can uh rewind all those conversations um and go listen to a different conversation and then rewind and go listen to a different conversation um so uh, the idea is not that you're you're getting it all in one go and you only have one go. It's that you're scrubbing through the records for stuff. Um, if you if you're looking at achievements, there are all sorts of little uh, uh, little nice things to find searching every drawer and such. But for the most part, you don't have to search every drawer. Um, I think there are some like keys to find to get into other drawers or, or codes to get into other drawers. 
um, that get you nice little kind of Easter eggy things. Um, but none of that is strictly necessary. I am not a big collector person. Um, I'm playing Super Mario Odyssey right now. And I, I, I'm in New Donk City and I, I, I looked it up and there are 81 moons to find in New Donk City. And I'm like, hell no, I'm going to get enough to, to get the hell out of here and move on because uh, screw this. Um, I can't be bothered finding them all. So uh, that's, that's the way I approach games. You'll be fine. Um, uh, get, get the through line. Uh, if you can answer um, what the hell happened, or if you have a good idea of what the hell happened on that space station, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, okay. Anything else? Lawful neutral. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess I didn't put a Tacoma question in it. I don't know. I forgot. Um Honestly, I haven't changed the questions since last year. I didn't change them. I just I just changed the dates when they're due and put them back up. So ask somebody what was on quiz two last year. Nobody's going to remember. Who cares? Um, okay. Uh, so all my secrets revealed. Um, I'm going to get a whiteboard. Share. Okay. Ah, uh, I need a straight line. So I'm going to talk about Hollywood screenplay writing. Um, Hollywood screenplay writing is uh, pretty much uh, to a form, right? Uh, in that uh, there are certain ways that everybody agrees to uh, write Hollywood screenplays. There are other ways. Um, there are very successful other ways and less successful other ways. Um, uh, if you go to like weird, and again, weird connotes bad somehow, but like indie films or European art films, or even like Pulp Fiction is not your three act structure. It, it jumps around in time and uh, has multiple stories going on. Uh, it, it is a different beast entirely, but this is your standard um, uh, Hollywood movie. Um, and in fact, Witness is a pretty standard Hollywood movie. Um, won the best screenplay Academy Award for 1985. I don't think it won anything else. Um, it, it hews to the standard. So wait, the uh, Witness won an Academy Award? Yes, I found that out I, last year. I, was like, I thought I thought those were for movies. Witness was a movie. The game we played. No, the movie we watched. Oh my god! I totally got the game and the movie confused. Okay, my bad. <laughs> I was thinking because I was thinking the witness. The witness is also the name of a game. Right. A puzzle game that is similar to the game we played. So I, I associated it with him ahead. And then we watched a movie, The Witness. And so I got all these crossed <laughs> wires. Okay. Yeah, yeah uh, no. The one about Harrison Ford among the Amish. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not about wandering a deserted island solving puzzles. <laughs> um, okay. So um, that said, I guess, um, a Hollywood screenplay, a Hollywood movie is standard at two hours or 120 minutes. Um, uh, so we're going to go, please excuse my mouse handwriting. Um, this is the best I could do. I don't have a tablet and a pen. Um, so uh, with standard uh, screenplay formatting, um, we uh, we assume we we estimate that it's about a minute per page of a standard screenplay. Um, sometimes it's more than a minute if somebody's got a big monologue and they're chewing up scenery and telling about how their rubber ducky died when they were five years old. Um, 
then that's that might take more than a minute for um for one page or you know it's uh, a, a the simple um uh direction a car chase ensues right and we could have a 15 minute car chase that is contained in a car chase ensues but um for for our purposes and, and for basic screenwriting purposes, it all balances out, right? So sometimes it's less than a minute on a page. Sometimes it's more than a minute on a page. Um, but uh, uh, in general, uh, if you try and hand in a uh, hundred and well, a 320 page screenplay uh, to some studio and say, please make my movie, uh, they're not even going to read it. In fact, if you watch um, the newly Academy Award nominated movie Mank showing on Netflix now about the writing of uh, Orson Welles' Citizen Kane, um, the original screenplay for Citizen Kane was over 300 pages long. Um, and uh, it was Orson Welles who who shaved it down and made it a manageable thing. Um, so that's why the screenwriting credits were uh, Herman J. Mankiewicz and um, Orson Welles, although uh, uh, there is argument, uh, apparently the movie ends with Mank saying, uh, I wrote the whole thing, I should get credit for it. And uh, uh, it, from actual screenplays, actual copies of the script, it's clear that uh, Orson Welles had uh, a lot of uh, input, if not, well, it, it fully deserved his co-writing credit. So given all that, 120 pages, um, if we divide uh, the, the 120 pages up into three acts, Bump, 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 bump. And again, my proportions are probably wrong. Um, but uh, uh, act one is our beginning. Act two is our middle. And act three is our end. Um, and in general, once again, uh, the first quarter of our story uh, is our act one. The next half of the story is act two. And the final quarter of the story is act three. Uh, beginnings and endings should go faster than middles. Uh, the middle is the meat, right? Um, so uh, we want to enjoy uh, the meat of the story. Okay. Um, so that means, because we can do math, um, Act 1 ends around 30 pages in, Act 2 ends around 90 pages in for 120 minutes. And uh, once again, you know, Lord of the Rings is three hours long. Uh, the Snyder Cut is four hours long. Um, uh, your Your basic comedy is 90 minutes long um the the actual numbers uh will change depending on the overall length um but the proportions remain the same a, a quarter half a quarter um so uh our beginning starts off with uh showing us what's normal Um, and t taking us through a day, right? Um, let me show you what the world is like on a normal day. Um, and like Passover, um, the first question we ask is, uh, how is this day different than any other day? Um, so uh, uh, because in a good story, this day should be different than any other day, right? Um, this is the, the, the day that we are looking at 
where everything changes. So, um, uh, right around uh, page 17 um, is what we call um, the catalyst moment. This is where everything that's normal changes. Um, it's also called the inciting incident that incites the story. Um, and you, I, I will ask your questions for you. Um, but Dean, page 17 seems awfully specific. Um, that, that, you know, why not page 15? Why not page 18? Um, I, and why se 17? It's like not halfway. It's a little bit more than halfway, but not very much past halfway. Um, and the truth of the matter is that if you read a hundred screenplays and every time you read one, you go, what's the inciting incident? And you say, oh, it's this. Um, and you go look at the screenplay. It'll be on page 17. I have written screenplays, um, not even thinking about it. I'm just writing away and I'm like, holy shit, it's page 17. And that's where the inciting incident is. Oh my God, I guess I'm doing it right. Um, so uh, um, just be aware of that. Uh, so um, let's think about uh, um, witness. Our normal world uh, is uh, the world of the funeral, the world of the Amish. Um, somebody said, hey, uh, do I have to know German for this class or something like that in the, the chat? while it was playing because there are no uh uh subtitles for all this german that they're talking um that and i said in the chat uh there are no subtitles and that's definitely a choice um they very much uh or peter ware the director um wanted uh the audience to uh to see the story to to Peter Ware wanted to tell the story through pictures, right? And leave the dialogue out. Um, so most of that first bit uh, doesn't have any English at all. Um, by, by not doing the subtitles, uh, he lets us, number one, uh, uh, just, just go with what we know. Um, and number two, feel a little bit like an outsider. We are not part of this world. Um, we don't understand everything that's going on here. And at the same time, we do. I had because... a question about that, actually. Yes, sure. In the, uh, like, was this movie, did they, did they dub it for different languages? Uh, I would assume. Because, like, just how does that what did they do for the German release? I have no idea. Um, uh, I would assume they just let it go. Right. That, that they, they spoke German and German people understood it. Um, uh, at the same time, you know, that doesn't, uh, he, they're making it for the English language. Um, so it, it, it doesn't work in Germany as well as it does in America. It's an American movie. Okay. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's not like they're going to change it to, to French or something. Um, they're just, they're just going to let it go. Um, in fact, uh, like, I don't know how you saw it, but every time the light was very low, um, the the picture was so grainy and it, you know i have the blu-ray um this is the one blue like it hasn't gotten the criterion collection treatment of remastering for 4k or anything and the 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 transfer to blu-ray is just not great so uh while this is one of my favorite movies it's not the world's favorite movie i think it's the movie that turned Harrison Ford into a real star because we saw that he could do things other than action adventure. Um, 
he's actually acting here as opposed to running around and and having uh uh people shoot at him although people shoot at him um so okay so uh we are um we are at this funeral a funeral is kind also kind of a big day um it is not the norm right um at the same time births deaths um are all part of life um and it's it, you know to cliche it all up it's the circle of life right so um while this is not the norm is uh, rachel's husband was a a young man at least maybe we don't know much about rachel's husband but as somebody pointed out in the chat during the movie uh her husband's been dead like a week and she's she starts like getting all a flutter about harrison ford um which seems not not good on her but you don't know we don't know anything about her relationship with her husband maybe it was a terrible relationship who knows maybe he was like 60 we don't know um so uh and and in the end it doesn't matter for for the story we're telling um uh, unless you want to uh, get judgy about how long she's supposed to mourn before um before falling in love the heart wants what it wants um so okay so uh uh that whole first bit is the normal world what is the catalyst what is the inciting incident of witness anybody anybody put it in chat yell it out i don't care what changes everything oh he sees the body yeah. He's, he sees the murder yes the big old murder the actual witnessing um it's like they put it in the title um so uh and the very interesting thing is that uh our normal world and our inciting incident happens without us ever having met the protagonist of the movie um we don't meet harrison ford we don't meet john book until after the inciting incident um but there's a clue there because um if we'd have followed john book say we open with john book i don't know waking up taking a shower uh doing his normal cop things having coffee um and then he gets the call there's been a murder at penn station and he, he shows up and and we go on from there um that tells us that the world that we're interested in is Philly cop world. Um, and the way that Peter Ware does it tells us the world that we're interested in is Amish world. Um, that, that we want, I want to show you what is normal for Amish world so that when my, uh, when my protagonist gets to the world um he's the one who's not normal so um the entire second half of act one is our um our hero begins their journey and and we're gonna go deep into the hero's journey later this week um uh but for now, um, uh, we're still here. Um, so okay, so I'm 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 losing it. Uh, so in in the second half, after the inciting incident, the hero still believes that things can all be put back. Right? If I do a couple of things, um, things are a little weird right now, but I can fix it, and we can get back to normal. Right? Um, all I have to, and in this case, John Book is doing his investigation thing, right? I, this is, I'm a Philly cop. Somebody's been murdered. I got a witness. I'm going to take him to a bar full of black guys, um, show uh, and, and squish a black guy against the, the, I'm pretty sure that's not standard procedure, like squishing the guy's face against the, the car window 
uh, is, is not exactly what you're supposed to do. Um, I'm going to let him look through mug books. Uh, I'm going to uh, put them up with my sister. Again, not, shall I say, by the book. Oh, the guy's name is John Book. Right? Um, he is the symbol of law and order. He tries to follow the rules. He is the punisher of the transgressors. Um, he doesn't even think other police officers are good enough, right? The What we hear f about from his sister through Rachel is that the rest of the police force can't find their uh, elbow from a hole in the ground or whatever it was, however she mangled it, right? So uh, he's very judgy, uh, but uh, transgresses himself, breaks the rules left and right. Um, so uh, at the end of act one, um, it becomes clear at least uh, to us, sometimes to the hero, most of the time to the hero, that uh, in order to uh, uh, continue, um, he must go on this journey. He must uh, see this through and nothing will ever be the same again, that the world has fundamentally changed and he must leave his normal uh, life in order to pursue a larger goal. Um, uh, so uh, where would you say is the end of act one? Where, where we leave the normal world um, and, or, or where our hero leaves the normal world. This is also in the hero's journey known as crossing the threshold. Um, probably when he crashes his car on or like um, passes out in the like in on their farm absolutely you got it in one so uh, a lot of people say it's uh, it's the shootout because that's when he has the realization that the cops are in on it or some people even say it's when the kid finger you know points out the, the cop um he has the realization. So first there's the realization that the, the murderer is a cop. Um, and then, you know, he goes to his old uh, uh, higher up, his old partner, who is now a big muckety buck. Um, and then the shootout is where he realizes that uh, his old partner is in on it. Um, but it's when he crashes into the, the bird house that we leave the normal world because up until then he is still planning on uh well he he's got a plan he's going to drop drop the uh rachel and samuel off he's going to go hole up somewhere uh in a hotel and he's gonna uh fix it all through cop stuff right um somehow um and it becomes clear once he's he crashes into the birdhouse. He ain't doing any of that. Um, he is going to be passed out, uh, and he is at the mercy of the Amish. He is now within Amish world. Um, and uh, in fact, the last thing he says uh, before he loses consciousness, they're like, "We need to get him to a hospital," and he says, "No hospitals. They have to report bullet wounds." Uh, I'll be dead, right? Um, so he asks them to take him in, and they do. Um, and that's where we get our second act. Our second act is entirely a series of rising uh, uh, obstacles that the hero must overcome. Um, speaking of rising, uh, you may have you may remember this from basically, uh every eighth grade like english class uh this is time this is action or excitement um and this is the arc of a story right it's somehow um 
somehow if we could chart how exciting a story is somehow measure it we don't ever ask how we would measure that i don't know eegs or something how 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 fluttery your heart gets um but uh usually this would be act one it's right around here would be act two the climax and then the denouement is this this little drop off here um which wraps everything up at the end um so uh uh, you notice these little uh, hooks. Um, these are usually right after an act break. Um, we let everybody rest for a minute. We Everybody catch their breath. It was very exciting there. And now, you know, calm down. We're going to get going again. Um, but we're going to, we're going to take it down a notch and then we're going to keep going up. Um, so, uh, uh, act two is a set of rising obstacles in witness. We have multiple stories going on. Uh, we have uh, uh, John book becoming more Amish. Right. And so he's got uh, his first Amish challenge, uh, which, which is probably just, surviving the bullet wound and drinking the tea right um and we can lump that into uh dressing like an amish dude right and using her her um husband's clothes we learned that uh amish guys don't use buttons um they have hooks and eyes because buttons are vanity um and it I don't know if you noticed, but uh, Daniel, the blonde guy who is courting her, when he shows up to court her and they're sitting on the um, the the porch drinking lemonade, he's got buttons. He is showing off. He is not playing. Um, he is, uh, uh, well, and if you go back in act one when they're leaving on the train and he's like on his cart standing there, like going racing the train with his horse and buggy. Um, if that's not showing off, I don't know what is, right? Um, so uh, uh, Book has to learn to be more Amish. Uh, the first is dressing that way. Um, the second is learning the ways of the farm, uh, how to milk a cow, how to wake up early, um, Samuel even takes him around, shows him the, uh, the well, shows him his kittens, shows him, uh, the corn place, the, the silo. Um, he learns the way of the farm. Um, he, uh, the other, this is kind of interspersed through it all, but, uh, there's the, um, uh, the carpentry he's gonna um uh be um be a carpenter uh he he apparently has some skill as the carpenter and now he's picking it back up and getting better and then we have the whole barn raising thing that kind of uh um he he becomes accepted among the amish because of his skill as a carpenter at the barn raising um uh, and actually there's one last one. We're going to put that down here and come back to it. Uh, then there's, um, th the love story, right? Um, and the love story actually kind of starts back, back in act one. Um, but, uh, we get, um, we get uh first we get the um the the well there's there's the whole lemonade thing right which is part love story and part amish story right so um we see daniel there um drinking courting and he's sipping the lemonade right um, and he's taking little sips because the longer it takes for him to 
uh, drink the lemonade, the more time he can spend with Rachel, right? And thus the date lasts longer. Um, Rachel, who's obviously more interested in John Book, um, uh, brings John Book a glass of lemonade after Daniel leaves. Uh, uh, John Book is carpentering and all sweaty and he just chugs that lemonade uh which is a big failure it's a big faux pas uh she wanted him to sip the lemonade to give her an excuse to stand there and talk to him he gulped it down put it down she's got no excuse to stand there and talk to him so uh he screwed up but uh he doesn't follow her rules and stands there and talks to her anyway so uh then we get to the barn raising and uh, he is much more in touch with his Amish side um, so that when Daniel takes a sip of lemonade and hands it to him while they're up on the barn, uh, uh, John Book takes a sip, smiles, and hands it back because he's more in touch with his Amish side by then. Um, uh, okay, so love two, uh, love one is, is the dancing while he's trying to fix the car the don't know much about history um and then uh there's all sorts of longing looks throughout we we could make a bunch of them uh then uh here there's uh the big the big icky uh bath scene i'm naked you see me naked do you want to come in no i'm not going to come in um and then uh the final one which is uh uh they do the big make out session in the field by the the bird cage right um and they're all hot and heavy for each other um we also have um the homicide investigation um so uh first is the first call um so let's call it murder one um where he he calls his partner the first time he goes in calls his partner and uh uh i'm too hot to handle uh uh i'm gonna hide out here um then there's uh well actually this is much later um uh oh actually we see it from the other side. We see the bad guys calling into um, into uh, Amish land, and maybe you could call around, and none of the Amish have phones. Um, and then uh, finally, we have um, uh, he's um, he calls his old partner, and he finds out his old partner is dead. Uh, presumably murdered by the bad guys. Um, So uh, it's here at the end of act two um, that we get our next big milestone. And this is his failure. This is when uh, there is some uh, uh, obstacle that the uh, hero does not overcome. He fails. Um, And by the way, I keep saying he... uh, the hero can be a woman. The hero can be a little girl. The hero can be a fox. The hero can be anything. It's just in witness. It's a white dude. Um, so uh, what is his big failure? End of act two. And it's where all three of these kind of come together. Uh, uh, anybody? Anybody? Okay, is I'm running during, out of time. What? Oh, is it when he, and he is it when he fights the guys with ice cream? Yes, exactly. He fails to be uh, Amish enough, right? Um, he fails to hide from the bad guys, and uh, in the end, uh, when he comes back and puts up the um, the birdhouse, um, he fails to resist. Rachel and they have the big make out session on the front lawn, which if you're trying to keep your relationship secret seems a silly place to, to have a big make out session, but whatever. Um, so that leads 
to act three um, where everything comes to a head. But um, before I do that, I got to stop right here because uh, I've got an assignment coming for everyone. So uh, I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to share this uh, share. Um, okay. So uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Uh, where is it? Character sheets. Oh, no. First, do, do, do. go to people in Canvas, right? Um, this is a list of all of you. Should be 26 of you. Um, you see these tabs up along here. There's everyone, there's project groups, and there's writing partners. Go to writing partners. There are 13 groups. You can do this now. You can do this later. Get yourself a writing partner. Um, uh, send an email, talk on the Discord, however you want to do it. I'm going to give you first first shot at it. Um, all you have to do is drag yourself over um, and put yourself in a group, and then you are in that group. I'm going to drag you back, Christian. So uh, get yourself a, a writing partner because you are going to need to write with a partner. That is um, you're in assignments. I'm gonna make this available right now. Character sheets, character sheets. Um, there should be a document here and uh, let me know if it's available to you. If somebody can click on it and let me know if it, it blocks you or not, I will fix it. I think it's gonna block you, but I will fix it. Um, these are, you're gonna make up six characters. Okay, and you should remember the, the point of this assignment is to write with a partner. Okay, so if you do this alone, you have done it wrong. It blocked um, me. Hello, hello. Yeah, it blocked me. It says okay, uh, I'll forbidden. Fix it. I'll fix it after class. Um, so uh, what you should do is one of you uh, has this sheet open. Uh, you can do it in Word, copy paste a bunch of them, however you want to do it. Um, uh, one of you just stand, sits there and talks. The other one types it all up. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, the first and, and asks questions. So the person who's doing the thinking, all they have in front of them is whatever's in front of them. They don't have to worry about writing anything down. Okay. The other person writes it all down and asks the question. So, uh, uh, the first thing you do is you say, what's this character's name? Ah, his name is Emil. Okay, his name is Emil. Um, what is the character? Now, uh, what is the character? That seems like a strange question. Uh, but to start, uh, one of you, the first character must be an animal. Okay, so um, you can make a fox, you can make a, a, an amoeba, you can make a dragon, mythical, real, I don't care. Um, you can make it anthropomorphic or you can keep it straight. So if you're making um, uh, a black bear, um, he could talk or maybe he's just a black bear in the forest. Uh, black bears have a physical description. They have an age, they have a gender, uh, although that's a construct. La la la. Um, they they have a personality. Um, where does that character live? You can answer all these questions for a non anthropomorphic animal, or you can anthropomorphize them. Please, please, please keep your uh, um, your characters original. I don't want to see any blue hedgehogs who run real fast. Um, but beyond that, anything goes. Um, then after, so then one of you describes the animal, the other one writes it all down, then you switch. And one person is asking, the other person is asking the questions. Um, and the, the, the first person is, is just noodling. Um, then you do it again uh, for a second character. They must be a thing. Uh, what is a thing? Well, it can be a chair. It can be uh, the uh, T-599,000 robot. Um, it can be 
uh, Al, the AI who lives in my contact lens. Um, so uh, up to you. Again, you can anthropomorphize them or not up to you. Um, and finally, your third character must be a human being. So at the end of this, between the two of you, you will have two animal characters, two thing characters, and two human being characters for a total of six characters. Um, I am going to warn you up front, all of these characters must uh, coexist in a single story. Uh, so you might want to keep that in mind going forward. One year, uh, one person made up an amoeba, the other person made up a blue whale. And I was like, okay, tell a story about them. And they're like, how's an amoeba going to talk to a blue whale? Ah! Right. So, um, uh, and, and, you know, uh, one of their things was a, a, a red dwarf star. And it was like, okay, uh, how does that interact with the whale and the amoeba? So maybe think about it beforehand. How are all these, these characters going to talk to each other or in some way interact? Uh, ba, ba, ba. Due date for this is Friday night at midnight. Um, we, we may do these in class. Um, why Friday night at midnight? Because over the weekend, you are going to be writing the story uh, that all these characters are part of. Okay. So you got to get the character. We're going to do the characters first, then we're going to write the story. Okay. Okay. Um, so get yourself into a group. Um, uh, next time we meet, if you're not in a group, I will put you in a group. Um, any questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. Sure. Um, when you said thing and you said it could be like an AI or a robot, could it be like a consciousness, like a voice inside someone's head? Uh, um, uh, keep it non-organic. So um, uh, I would consider, well, I guess like, I don't know, a brain tumor. Is that a thing? What if the brain tumor talked? What if, what if a, a a carbuncle on on your shoulder started, grew a mouth and started talking to you? I guess sure. I don't know. I'm I'm pretty open. Um, make an attempt to keep it a thing. If, how is if you can't answer? How is this a thing? Um, then uh, uh, you haven't thought about it enough, or uh, it's not a thing. How's so, that? for the thing, would like Kit from Knight Rider count? Yep, <laughs> okay. absolutely. It's <laughs> <Just> making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you don't want to do Kit from Knight Rider because that's somebody else's uh, uh, creation. I, I it just like that line of like <laughs> right, thing exactly. talking. Yeah, that doesn't have like eyes like cars. Right, but I, cars. at the same time. If you want to make um, a microphone uh, that talks back to me and never explain why it's talking back to me, I'm okay with that too. Yeah. No, I was just making anthropomorphized or not anthropomorphized, up to you. Um, okay. Uh, we are out of time once again. This all goes very quickly. I will get to Act Three on Thursday uh, and we'll talk about that. Um, and uh, uh, start down the hero's journey. We've kind of touched on some of it already, um, uh, but we'll, we'll go deep because that's where we're going is the hero's journey. Um, so, okay, so have a good Wednesday. Uh, I'm gonna stop the share at this point um, and uh, enjoy your non-class day. I'm gonna stop recording.